Hi, I'm Dr. Wilson. I'm a PhD molecular biologist and welcome to another COVID-19 debunking video. This week, I'm revisiting Dr. Sushari Bhakti. Bhakti has been pretty influential among COVID conspiracy theorists and skeptics for several months now, mostly because he actually had a career in science. I say had because what he does now is strictly pseudoscience. In fact, the Society for the Scientific Investigation of Pseudosciences, a European entity, actually recognized Dr. Bhakti for his work by giving him the Golden Blockhead Award. This is of course a negative award that is given to people who are outstanding in the field of spreading pseudoscience. This website is of course in German, but here is the English translation. Now, I already made a video about Dr. Bhakti explaining why he deserves this award, but he still goes viral with his videos, and pretty much deserves a second award. So I'm going to make a second video about him. Let's get into it. Now, let me tell you something very, very alarming. So alarming that this piece of news is just as important as the good piece of news. And this comes also from the publications that have just appeared. Sounds very cryptic and interesting, I know. But spoiler alert, he doesn't actually reference any papers. Not a single one. What you're about to watch is him drawing on a whiteboard, saying things that are not supported by any scientific data whatsoever. These things merely exist in his mind. Now, listen very carefully. Look at this. This is a vessel wall. This is your blood. It is now known that the genes that are injected into your body will enter the bloodstream and it is absolutely certain now that these genes are going to enter the cells that line the vessel wall. Does he have any experiments to show that this is in fact what happens? No, of course he doesn't. And what we do know about where the vaccine contents go after being injected actually contradicts this idea. So we all know that vaccines are injected into muscle, not directly into the bloodstream. And there's a good reason for this. It's so that all of the contents of the vaccine can be localized into mostly one place so that your immune cells can focus on that one place. This is shown to be exactly what happens in the context of mRNA vaccines. Biodistribution studies in lab animals show that almost all of the contents of the vaccine stay at the injection site with very minimal amounts going elsewhere in the body. The spikes will then be produced by the cell and protrude from the cell surface into the bloodstream. There's really no reason to believe that the spike protein from vaccines will be expressed in significant amounts on the inside of your veins. But despite that, that's pretty much Bhakti's whole premise for this video. So let's see where he goes with it. Now, these cells are going to be recognized by your lymphocytes that have born or given to you by the dear Lord to kill those cells that are making the virus or the virus protein, any virus protein. Okay, I think I know where he's going with this. It's gonna be bad. So these lymphocytes are going to mount the attack on your vessel walls. This is the first way towards clot formation that as we know is happening all over the place, all over the world. <sighs> yeah, that's bad. Okay, no. This kind of immune response does not form blood clots. What he's talking about here are CD8 positive killer T cells, which patrol the body and remove things such as cancer cells or cells that are infected with viruses. This is a completely natural, normal process that you want to be happening in your body. And in fact, these CD8 positive T cells are essential for resolving thrombotic events, or in other words, they're essential for clearing out blood clots. It's literally the complete opposite of what he's saying, even though he didn't have any evidence to support what he's saying in the first place. Because if we look at the data, we see that mRNA vaccines are not even associated with blood clots. Yeah, there is no increased risk of blood clotting with mRNA vaccines for COVID. It's just not seen. There were, of course, very rare instances of blood clotting seen with Johnson & Johnson and AstraZeneca vaccines. But again, those are extremely rare. And a good rule of thumb with vaccine side effects is that almost always they will be side effects that 
you are much, much more likely to experience and experience them much worse if you actually get the infection that the vaccine is trying to prevent. And that is absolutely the case with COVID. If you get infected with COVID, you are hundreds of thousands of times more likely to suffer from serious blood clots than you are with a COVID vaccine. So once again, if you're worried about blood clots, get vaccinated. But Dr. Bhakti's not done yet, so we'll let him keep talking. Antibodies and complement and leukocytes are also going to attack, thinking that your cells that are producing these spikes are bacteria. I'm sorry, I'm confused. Is he saying that your body thinks that cells expressing spike protein are bacteria? No, they recognize them as cells that are expressing foreign antigens, consistent with them being infected with a virus. What is he talking about? Now, this attack of the Air Force and the Navy on a single cell target has never been seen before. There is no situation because either you're combating a virus or you're combating a bacteria. Mixed infections that uh, go through the body are actually virtually unknown. What? He's saying that your body has completely different immune responses depending on whether or not it's a bacteria or a virus, and that virus and bacteria never work together in the body to make a host sick? What? Okay, I had a stroke for a second, but I'm back. That was one of the most weirdly wrong things I've ever covered on this channel, and that's saying something. Just the fact that he had a career in microbiology, again, emphasis on the had part, and doesn't know about co-infection of virus and bacteria is pretty wild. A really well-studied example of this is flu staph co-infection. When people get the flu, it's very common for the infection to be followed up or enhanced by a staph infection, which is a bacteria. A lot of work has been done to understand what these two pathogens do and how they work together in the context of a co-infection, and it's pretty fascinating work. I'll put some links in the description, but without going into too much detail in this video, just know that these two pathogens can work together in a synergistic way in a co-infection scenario. So yeah, it's definitely a thing that he should definitely know about if he knows what he's talking about. And the simple fact that he made a statement that is so weirdly wrong, I really hope that gets you to think twice about following him if you do follow him. I don't know if it's possible for someone to win a Golden Blockhead Award twice, but it seems like Bhakti's really trying for it, isn't he? Well, that's going to do it for this week's video. That was a short and easy one, but Bhakti really makes it easy. So, there you go. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you want to see more of me, don't forget to subscribe and tune in this Saturday for another episode of COVID Conversations. It should be pretty interesting. But either way, most weeks I'll be uploading a video just like this where I'll be debunking some more funky stuff. See you then.